Hi everyone, welcome back to Crow Roots. This is Shannon. I just wanted to post a quick video for those of you who are watching me and maybe you are from my area or my zone, which was known as USDA Zone 8A. Well, the USDA has updated their national zone map and my area is now considered Zone 8B. We've changed zones, y'all. I am not quite sure when the USDA updated the zone map, but they absolutely did for our area. And according to the map legend, the update is based on statistics from 1991 to 2020. So if you are interested, I suggest you click on the link above, enter your zip code in the zip code search, and find out if your USDA hardiness zone has changed based on those new statistics. This was not much of a shock to me because I know we have had some mild winters in some of the most recent years, and it is the minimum temperatures that USDA actually looks at when they assign the hardiness zones. All of that to say though, if you live in Texas, please take all of this with a grain of salt. Maybe your area is similar, but for us Texans, we know that our temperatures can fluctuate quite significantly from year to year. I'll get to that in a bit. So here you see a breakdown of each zone and the average low temperatures that correspond to each zone. Here in the continuous United States, it looks like we have zones from zone 3A through 10B. The average low temperatures range from negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit in zone 3A to 35 degrees in zone 3B. 3B. In my previous zone, 8A, according to the USDA, the average lowest temperature we would see each year was between 10 and 15 degrees Fahrenheit. Now in zone 8B, our average lowest temperature is 15 to 20 degrees. One thing I do wanna point out that is pretty crazy to me is that when I did a city search in the field on our website that says zip code, I actually put in my city, which is Aubrey, Texas, and it shows me a very detailed map of Aubrey. And it shows that just a few miles north of me, it is still zone 8A. It's kind of crazy to me that our city is split up in these little micro zones, but it does make sense because we do see some big temperature fluctuations. And sometimes those big temperature fluctuations are just to the north of us. So I definitely encourage you to try entering your city into the zip code field in the link above and see if your zone has changed and if your city is also broken up into these different micro zones like mine is. This change doesn't really mean too much to me in the way that I treat my garden spaces because again, I know that our temperatures can really fluctuate quite a bit in the winter and in the summer and both the low temperatures and high temperatures can cause my plants to die any given season any given season if it is outside of the normal range i know a couple of recent winters have brought some very cold temperatures to our area and i was curious to see what those low temperatures were and what zone they would have corresponded to for plant hardiness zones so I just looked up the years 2020 through this year, 2023, and I researched the lowest temperature we encountered for those years. In 2020, our lowest temperature occurred on Valentine's Day, February 14th, 2020. The low temp that day was 25 degrees. This actually would correspond, correspond to a zone 9A if that were normal for us. So that was a warm winter for sure. In 2021, our lowest temperature was actually minus one degree Fahrenheit on February 16th, 2021. That's what I mean when I say that our temperatures fluctuate so much from year to year. So we went from a year where we didn't see any temperatures below 25 degrees <laughs> in 2020 to 2021, where we dropped all the way down to negative one degree Fahrenheit. I remember this year, this was also the year that many North Texans were without power because our power grid could not handle the extreme low temperatures that our area was having. That low temperature of negative one would have corresponded to zone 6B, a whole two zones colder than our norm. In 2022, our coldest day was actually in December, which is unusual. We usually see our coldest temperatures in January and February in the winter. December 6th to 2022 
it got down to zero degrees Fahrenheit. This was another really, really tough one for us, maybe even more so than the minus one of the previous year, because this temperature happened even before it was actually winter time. It was technically fall at this time. And our temperatures before that cold front hit were actually quite warm, if I remember correctly. I think it was maybe 50 degrees or 60 degrees before the the cold front hit and so we had a huge drop in temperatures all the way down to zero degrees that very quick temperature change caused a lot of plants to die in my area and i remember it killed a lot of my hydrangea buds as well we didn't see that great bloom of hydrangeas this spring in north texas at all and i have so many hydrangeas so i definitely felt that <laughs> uh, we just did not see the the bloom of hydrangeas this spring because that that um, zero degree temperature in december when the buds are actually forming in the fall that just killed all of our spring buds so this low temperature of zero degrees would have corresponded to zone 7a so one whole zone lower so all of this to say, it is helpful to know which growing zone you are in, and it is helpful to know if your growing zone has changed, but it is much safer to really assume that sometimes your temperatures can fluctuate to one or two zones below or one or two zones above what you would normally see and plan accordingly. For me, it's safest to plant my gardens with plants that I know could survive in zone seven with cold hardiness because sometimes we go down to zero degrees like zone 7a and if they're in a pot then I know that my plants need to survive two zones below that so zone 5 if it's in a pot. I also know that our high temperatures really fluctuate and our summers seem to be getting warmer so if I have a plant that is only hardy up to zone 8 I know that I need to protect that plant from the scorching afternoon sun in the summer. Well, I hope this all was helpful to you. I hope you are able to click on that link and see if your hardiness zone has changed. Um, please, I encourage you to go to the USDA hardiness zone map a website and kind of check it out. They have a, a particular section that talks about this new change in 2023 and how they, uh, how they came about to rezone their hardiness map. And there's a lot of information on that page. I encourage you to look that up. Um, and let me know in the comments if your zone has changed. And then let me know also if you looked at your city and if your city has all these little micro zones like I am seeing in my city as well. Well, I hope you have a great day, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to subscribe to Grow Roots. Bye.